my little email earlier in my announcement said that if anybody's got a, a pet they want to show, we have a couple minutes for class. If anybody's got a, anybody got their pet, I showed my little pet. I got, we got two other dogs. Show. But if anybody wants to jump in there and, and, and show their pet, um, please do it. Nobody likes dogs, huh? I got some I can show. Okay. Got you. These are my pet fish. Oh, cool. Okay, good. good. <laughs> right. <laughs> A little hard to see, but we'll take your take your word for it. They're in there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll take your take your word. The big ones, huh? Nobody much likes pets. You know. You know, I, there's there's a few people in the world that that don't like dogs and don't like the Beatles, you know, and, and, you know, to each their own and, and that's okay. And I'm not saying you're a bad person, but like, if you don't like the Beatles, like you're really, like really weird. Okay. <laughs> I got something I can show. Okay, good. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, Some kind well, of fish like thing. Yeah. One stop. Maybe this will help. Oh, there we go, like a jellyfish or something. Yeah. What are they, jellyfish? Yeah, but they're not real. They're just cool. No, oh, that's okay. You shouldn't have told us that. <laughs> it's like a lava lamp. You blew it, man. Oh, I don't want to lead you on. But say, that guy Lucas, man, he's got like pet jellyfish, man. That's cool as hell. You'd have the coolest pet ever, but you just, you, 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 you goofed it. Don't tell me. It looked real. Yeah. Well, thank you, other than the fact you goofed it. Think how impressed people would be. Oh man, that guy's cool. I want to meet him. Anyway, thank you. So, anyway, eleven fifteen. We'll get started here. Um, if anybody else has 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 a pet or something like that or a cool lava thing, um, again, I, I'll try to get logged on five minutes before. I was struggling with it today. I don't know why. Um, <clears throat> also, you know, logging in early it gives you guys a chance to say, "Hey, hello," or just "hello," or it's like. One thing that bothers me about the one thing of many things that bothers me about the Zoom is that I don't walk into a, a, a classroom and see your smiling or frowning faces. I really miss that part. And you know, talking to real humans, I don't I just that part of it is just gone almost. Uh, so it's nice to see some things. But anyway, if in the minutes before the class, we'll log on. If you just want to say hello, you want to show a pet, or if you, or if you a couple minutes to say, hey, Professor Vic, you know, I was really confused about such and such. To, to let me know ahead of time, and I'll try to try to uh, you know cl clarify that issue. Of course, you can send us emails too about that. But you know, if if you that last lecture, I was confused about such and such, and let me know, I will gladly try to say more about it. Okay. Um, anyway, I'll try to log on as or you know five to ten minutes early. Okay, today we're going to start with Jason. He is. Evidently, he's got a lot of um, questions about the canvas and the various things. So I'm going to turn it over to him. He's going to give us uh, the, a few minutes of the clarification of the canvas site. Okay, go ahead, Jason. Okay. Uh, hey, everyone. All right, you should probably move yourself. Oh, I need to. Yeah. Okay. I just need you. Okay. Anyways, we I've gotten a lot of questions. Hold, hold, hold on a minute. This is why.
Okay, so I've gotten a few questions about um, how the course operates, how Canvas operates, and some other logistical questions. So I thought I'd start today by going over some of that. So first off, this is the Canvas homepage. Uh, we tried to put a lot of information about the courses we can into the homepage here. So the first thing you'll know is that if you click on this textbook link, um, it links directly to the site where you can buy the textbook, which we use in this class. Um, if you already have uh, a previous copy from a previous semester, by all means, go ahead and use that. Um, you don't necessarily need it until week four when you have your first reading quiz. And I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I, I do know that on the week one page down here, it does say to read chapter one, but chapter one, if you have the textbook already, is sort of a preface. If you don't have the textbook yet, you're honestly not missing too much. So don't worry about that just yet. And then here in this box, we have Varsha's office hours, three to five on Wednesday and one to three on Friday. If you click either of these links, it'll take you directly to Varsha's Zoom office hours. And then down here, since you are all here, you've successfully made it to the Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes. And there's there seems to have been some confusion over what this says versus what's on the timetable. So if you look on the timetable, you'll see that there's one section, which is the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11.15 to 12.05. But then there are these also like four or five other sections that have a longer Friday block. Each one of these grayed out sections is out of service. So these are inactive. If you were previously enrolled in one of these four or five sections, you've been moved to this one. So all of our lectures will be from Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11.15 to 12.05. We will not have any of these longer Friday blocks. So just want to make that clear to everyone. Yep. Yep. And then we are going to be recording and posting all of the lectures and they will be, let's see, let me pop open the chat. They will be posted to uh, my YouTube channel, which first off I've linked in the course description down here, but if I yeah, pop up the chat here, this is a direct link to my channel in case you want to subscribe or something. Uh, the reason why we're using YouTube this semester is because last semester we had a lot of really weird and unresolved problems with Canvas's media gallery. So we would record the lectures, post it to the media gallery, and then every week we would get emails saying like the video wouldn't load or it would stop loading halfway through. And then there are just a whole bunch of problems that we can figure out. So when we moved to YouTube about halfway through last semester, um, as sort of a backup, no one really had any issues with that. So I think we, we've enabled the media gallery just as sort of a backup, but don't expect to use that as much. So we're just leaving that as an option. Um, it's not on there right now, but I can add it. Yeah. Things, things in the front page are directly linked to directly back. You do mm -hmm. not have to go two or three levels in the menu. So that one. We'll yeah. That one. And then here, this, this course pages block is basically the landing site for what we're going to be doing every week. So obviously there's a week one page that's already up, and then we're going to continually fill in the rest of this grid as we progress throughout the semester. And very related to that is the upcoming assignments block, which we will update regularly and we put a note when we update it. So just um, if you haven't already seen it, there is an optional practice quiz, which you can take practice quiz because Canvas did something over winter break and like they, they changed their quiz engine. Um, it, it's really unfamiliar to us admittedly and it's probably unfamiliar to you too. So we're giving this to you as an option to just explore the interface. And then there's of course policies quiz, which counts for you know, your first quiz, which is due not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, the 31st at 11.45 p.m., 11.45, not 11.59. And when we go to the week one page over here, you can see um, more of an expanded view of what each week entails. So for example, this week you have these Canvas page readings and then the reading on the first textbook chapter, and then you have the associated quizzes or deliverables, then when we get down to the lectures block, you'll see this is where we post the recordings. So after today, I'm gonna to fill in this slot here with the YouTube recording link. If you click this hyperlink, it'll take you to the recorded lecture from Monday's class. You also have every week 
or most weeks, some additional lectures, which you can and should watch. So the first one is um, just sort of my opinion on how to succeed in this class. The second one, which you don't have to watch this week because we're going to cover it in more detail next week, is just a brief overview on MATLAB Grader, which you all should have received an invitation for um, yesterday or Wednesday after class. And then if you did get the invitation to MATLAB Grader and you want to start working on the first workshop, by all means, go ahead. I took a look and some of you are pretty much already done with it, which is great. Uh, if you have no clue how to do anything in MATLAB, don't worry because workshop one won't be due this Sunday, but next Sunday. And next week, we're going to go over everything you need to do workshop one. And then if we scroll down, I would take a look at the supplemental materials down here. Um, every week, I'm going to change this. So there are going to be some practice problems that are particularly pertinent to some stuff that we're doing in uh, one particular week or another. But generally, what I would recommend doing is that each of these weekly pages will be posted um, basically sometime on Sunday afternoon or evening. So when they go up, if you have a chance to check Canvas on Sunday evening and you see that this page is up, you should take a look at what, we're, at what that week entails. I would start by doing the readings if you can before Monday, because more often than not, there's going to be some sort of reading quiz. Now, let me just sort of contradict myself and say that there won't be a textbook reading until week four, so in about three weeks. But next week, the week two page will have basically a copy of this. I would recommend doing the course policies quiz sooner than later, because next week we're gonna give you your first workshop and your first homework, all of which will be due on 131, which is when this is due. So if you have time this weekend, I would recommend knocking this out of the park. So it's one less thing you have to worry about next weekend. And then next week you have um, a few more additional lectures to watch too, just about MATLAB basics. And sometimes you'll have a quiz on the additional lectures. And so this is sort of a, an overview of how to use Canvas, how this course works. And I know that for some of you, uh, if you live outside of Blacksburg or even the United States, coming to class at this time may be hard or pretty much infeasible, which is why we're recording and posting everything. However, please note that there will be delays between when we finish this class and when the YouTube link gets posted to this page. Um, due to things like various processing powers, um, you know, each, each video file we produce is, you know, two to three gigs large. And when you upload a file that big to YouTube, it's gonna take a lot of time to process. So please bear with us as we um, sort of get our footing here with all the YouTube and stuff like that. So if you guys have any more questions about course operations, uh, feel free to let us know. Oh, and also please note that every page on Canvas is dynamic. So we are going to be continually updating these weekly pages, you know, of course, first off to fill in these things here with the lecture links. But then we also might add an announcement and then we'll send out an announcement, a corresponding announcement. Um, if we say, if we have like a homework clarification or something like that, and then we're gonna update the homepage a lot too with things like your upcoming assignments. And we're also gonna fill in this grid with all the weekly pages as well. So please be checking Canvas very thoroughly and very often because these pages can and will change throughout the semester. All right.
Professor, we, we still can't hear you. I can't hear him either. Did you try turning it off and back on again? Okay, so try try talking. Can you hear me now? You're a bit quiet, but yes. I know that was earlier too. Was I, that's because because come to Jason's computer. This is maddening. I mean, you know, talked all my life. People don't want to hear me talk. Um, but it's echoing through, isn't it? Yeah. So. Try out the speaker on your laptop. And that, and then they have to get it to your computer and you can't hear it. It's driving me to the insane asylum. God. Oh my god. Oh, the good old days when I could walk into a class and there was human beings there. And, oh my god. I could talk to you and we could actually get something done without spending the whole class trying to do the volume or something. I think I think if I don't make it all semester, I'll be just look me up in the insane asylum, okay? Uh, all right. Well, we're gonna do MATLAB. Is that what they're saying right now? Why can't they see the whole thing? Yes, I, I don't have a... No. Okay, there's nothing like, um, if you want to learn to play baseball, get up and throw a baseball or whatever, you know. And here's MATLAB. I started to introduce you to it last time. Um, the uh, There's the command window where you do things and the workspace we introduced a little bit to. And and I what I explained last time, I started doing a few commands and said that, you know, like if we don't save them somewhere, they're all lost. And so the start off here, we'll again review this, uh, these kind of uh, programs here. You, can, uh, you got something called a script. We're gonna get to a function here, oh, in a few days, it's gonna be really important. But for the time being, a script file, we'll open up a script file. There it is. And a script file is a collection of commands that can be saved and can be run and rerun and edited and et cetera, et cetera. It's just like a whole collection of, of things, including comments and things like that. So the idea on this one, today's topic is, now I'm gonna put in percent is a, is a comment. I know some of you've been doing this for 10 years, but, um, and I'll put a double percent for it. I'll tell you, it, this is the introduction to Matt Lab, all right? Right. I, 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 now, before I, we get going, you know, you also need, you can't do anything without saving it. And, you know, of course, untitled one, two, three, oh, what a wonderful descriptive title. So what I'm going to do is I've, on my computer, I have to save it somewhere. We might as well go through the little save process because you have to do that. We can only run, save, save as, and here's stuff on my computer. All right. Um, you know, I got to find, find some place to save it, right? You find some place logical. All right. I've made a little thing. I mean, have everything all crammed together as a lifestyle is not really good. I mean, I try to make little things here, right? You know, I, I like YouTube. I copy things from that, but you know, it's uh, probably under Buddy Holly is probably not the proper place, but I've made another little place, um, under this course and under MATLAB and basics. I'm starting to form the things, basics. So I'm gonna put it there. Do something similar on your computer. I would hope you have at least a directory to ME2004. And under that, there's so much stuff, I would think you would need subdirectories, like all crammed together. What really bothers me is I'll see a student and there's like a thousand things on their desktop. There's not even a file folder or anything. I'm like, how do you? It's not up to me to tell you how to get dressed and everything, but 
Anyway, I'm going to uh, save it there. And I'm going to save it untitled, terrible name. I'll call it what it is, intro. Intro to MATLAB. Notice you can't put, uh, like Microsoft Word, you can put spaces here. You, you have to put the underscore. Uh, MATLAB will not recognize a, a, a program, a, a file with uh, blanks in the thing. I wish it would. I like that better. Save. There we go. Intro to MATLAB. Okay. So we'll start off here. We can start doing some things. And kind of like what we did last time, uh, we'll put the basic operations. And that includes, of course, computations, you know, one plus two. And often it's nice to put things as variables, x equals one plus two, okay. Now, one thing about programming, their programs will get much, much more complicated than this. And I recommend that you, I've seen so many students type in 100 lines of code, they press return and it doesn't work. Gee, who'd have thought that? Who'd have thunk it? I asked them, did you try line 12 by itself? Well, no, I just typed it. I don't know why students think that will work. I've made so many mistakes, I test every line of code. I don't put two lines of code in this. And it, that's going to work, I know. But, but the thing is, you don't go on until you test things, make sure they work. So let's run this one, let's see, if it, see what it does. Editor. And, and one thing good, there's good and bad things about MATLAB. I mean, first of all, it's extremely powerful. It is my second favorite piece of software in this entire world. I think it's one of the greatest softwares ever developed. And you'll see it, but it, it'll do lots and lots of things. These, these, uh, uh, what do you call those things? Tabs, those uh, panels up there are just full of stuff. There's thousands of commands, tremendously powerful, etc. Okay, that's the good part of it. That's also the trouble with it, is that for a new user, there are tens of thousands of commands, options, things, and thereby the learning curve can be pretty, pretty brutal. So. Its power is also the challenge in learning it. You know, if, if it didn't do very much, you'd only have a few things, but it does amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm learning stuff all the time. I mean, I know some subset of MATLAB, you know, a bigger subset than you guys probably, so I'm okay to teach you, but that's the way it is. I mean, it's just amazing. So you've got tons of stuff. Look through these options up here and get used to them. So home, we want to run this thing. We look up home. Uh, I don't see anything. Editor. Open, save, run. There you go. You know, you might argue that that button should be out there somewhere by itself. But what they have done, like most, most software is that they, they organize their commands by groups. Like here's the run kind of command like things. You know, when you go to home, here's file commands. Back in the day, they didn't used to do that. At least modern software is, is putting groups of commands that belong together. Like, here's how to code. Here's how to do different things. So I think their little panels have improved. Nevertheless, there's tons of stuff. It's still a challenge for us. So let's run this. See what happens. Oh, it got change folder. Okay, it wants to, it wants to find that. It, okay, here's another thing that came up. Change folder. I can press change folder. But what's happening here? It looked in this immediate folder. It only looked at the folder I had specified for it, or is it in the path? The, the file I just saved was not this folder or in the path. So I have to change that folder or add it to the path. I'll talk more about the path here, but not today. Okay, there it is. Intro to MATLAB. And that, that's like this command right here was like running it. I could run it from the command window, but you see it did x equals three. I could do intro matlab. If I type that command in, it just does it from the command window there. Um, after you get a computation, and, and, and here's, let me refer to the workspace again, this thing down here. This is a summary of your, of your variables so far. So, so far, we only, I cleared everything before I started this. So far, only one variable is that it's X and it's, it has a value three. 
It'll also give the size and different things of the matrices when they come in there. So that can be valuable to look at. You can also, if, you're, if you don't know what X is, you can just type X in the command window and it'll put out what it is. So there's various ways to use this thing. Also in terms of, of the use of this thing, home environment. If you go up to the environment thing here, the way it looks, the preferences, the path, the layout, I have the default selected because that's what everybody's looking at. But you know, you might like something else like the command window only, you know, kind of thing. The command like to get rid of that, um, to get to get rid of the workspace and the, and the thing to get it out of your way like that. But what I'll do here for is I will just use the default setup because most of you all will be looking the same way. Okay. Suppressing output. This is a little comment. You can put those in there and you should have lots of them. Professional programmers, by the way, I, I, I think I saw that, you know, in, in a, when, if you work for a company, if you work for MathWorks or if you work for Microsoft or whatever, that at least half, half the lines of code are comments or blank spaces. You know, unlike students who dev all this and, and almost no comments. I personally, I'll admit, as I go through showing you stuff this semester, I'm, I'm anxious to get to the, the, the material and I sometimes don't put in enough comments. So I'm, I'm my bad there too, but I'm not usually as bad as the students. But anyway, two times five. Now, well, let's, let's, first of all, let's just run. And, and when we run this thing, before we run it each time, let's do CLC, which is clear the screen so we don't look at the old stuff. And that thing I did to our format, it's compact. I don't know why I get confused about that. Okay, let's run this thing again. Now, how do we find that? Editor, run. E repetition, you know, let's say I said, let's say Professor Vic said something on when Friday's class. Well, yeah, well, I'll, I'll try to say things many, many times because you're not gonna remember every little, little icon here. So there you go. Now let, let's say you've tested out this, this line here and it, it works fine. Now you wanna go on, but you don't wanna keep looking at it. It's like, it's annoying, right? I mean, you don't wanna keep looking at that line of code because it works, you wanna go on, it's not your output. What you can do is put the semicolon at the end and it'll suppress the output. So you'll be doing that a lot. What I do when I'm, when I'm actually forming code usually is for the testing, now there, there are some more sophisticated debugging tools in here, but a great debugging tool, I think, is to test a line of code without the um, suppression and then with it. So let's run that, see what it does. Note, the X still comes out, the Y does not, but Y is still in the, in the workspace. So that's what I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll um, Test it, make sure it works first, and then instead of looking at it every time, I put the thing. You could, you could put the suppression on that one too. There you go. Okay. Anyway. Uh, help. Well, you got to get used to. You got to practice. First of all, practice. Second of all, you could go to MATLAB help on the internet. I think I did that last night and without a direct, I mean, it was MATLAB help or help MATLAB or something like that. And it came up with a few hits, like I think about a hundred million. And like I said, what the hell is good? I mean, an overload of information. So how do you get help? You, you some directed searches from MATLAB. And if you know about a, a command in MATLAB and want to know more about it, what you can do is do uh, help. Let's say you want to help on something. We'll see what comes up with. I guess I can do that here. Uh, run. And when you say help and a command, if that's a legitimate command, MATLAB's help will come up. S-I-N. It's the sign of argument in radians, et cetera, et cetera. You know, this is your old friend, uh, the trig function that you know, you, you know and love but there's MATLAB's help on it. 
and each one will have a lot of help. What I prefer, because this is a little bit, to me, hard to read and maybe not quite so complete, is, and I guess you go document it, is do doc help, you know, like doc on sign right there. Let's uh, do this one. And when you say doc, <clears throat> The same sort of information comes up, but it looks like this, which looks to me, it's not so, doesn't look so good. It's just easier for me to read personally. You might like the other version, that's fine. But there's the syntax, how to use it. Here's the description. And what this has too, is, is, which is really nice, is examples on how to use it. Now, in this particular case, the sign probably you didn't need too much help. I know personally, as I go through MATLAB, I'm using help all the time on things I've never used. You as, as beginning students will almost invariably be going to this help quite a bit. There it is. And what's an examples. Now, everybody likes examples, right? It's, it's one thing to read the syntax and read the theoretical description, how it works, da, da, da. But, and in this case, you know, I've used it so much, I don't need extra help after 50 years of using it, I hope not. But Sometimes a brand new command that I've never used and, and I read it, I think I get it, but I'd, I like, to, personally, I like an example. Anybody like that? Any of y'all like examples? Or am I just weird? I don't know, whatever. Um, so I like that part. This is just a lot, a lot of information here directly in MATLAB. So I don't go to the internet too much. Like you, 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 you Google experts, of course, can find that. So anyway, let's see. I, I hope I don't close everything. There we go. All right. Learn to help yourself. It's, it's one thing to be on, the, you know, to email myself or Jason or something and have, have us help you or the other. But so often in your learning and your professional career, you're not going to have, you've got to figure stuff out for yourself, whether it be this or your job you're working on. To, to, to learn how to help yourself is really valuable. Uh, Uh, should I show the published thing? Eh, maybe not the published so quick. So I'll show that next time. Okay, next major bracket. Now, when I do a major set of things, I'm going to put the double parentheses in here. And the next major thing I'm going to show you is about matrices. All right, here at least. Matrices. Uh, after all, MATLAB, that's Matrix Laboratory. That's where the name MATLAB comes from. The matrix is the basic data structure. I mean, there are um, string structures and there's, you know, all, there's other fancier structures, you know, things that we'll, we'll talk about today. But the basic element in Mat MATLAB is the matrix. You have to be able to theoretically know about matrices and you have to be able to manipulate them, etc. cetera. I've, I've, almost always I get a student will say like, you know, gosh, I did terrible in my linear algebra class and I'm really not very good with matrices. And can I, can I get by in this course? Can I get by MATLAB and not, not really use matrices? Uh, no, flat N-O, you will flat fail. You just can't do it without being knowing how to do matrices and being good with matrices and if you're one of those students that feels that way and that's okay you know you might not have done well in your linear algebra matrices class you're going to be better today and as 15 weeks from now you will be much much better with matrices and i hope the stigma of them or you know the whatever the fear of them will have at least partly or mostly gone so um generate Matrices and I don't want to I'm going to generate a matrix. All right. And let's um over here on this part, because we've already done this, let's put suppression on this because when we get to our new stuff, we don't want to keep looking at this other thing here. I wonder if I can just uh on the help, Jason, I wonder if I can put the I don't think the um semicolons, I, I can always just put a comment those out right because i don't want to keep looking at that every time actually i can try that let me let me try something yeah do this 
Mm -hmm. I want to see what happens if I do that. Hmm. Oh, okay, the sign still came up. All right, what I want to do here is I'm going to comment out these help things. They've turned into comment. You can uncomment them if you want them later. But anyway, let's get so that we only see the new thing, which is generate matrices. All right. The matrix A equals. I mean, one way you can do is type every every element in it. You know, a matrix is like a one and a two. I mean, it can be all sorts of things. And a two and a three and a four and a five. Okay. And as I just said, you test every line of code. I don't know, care how cocky you are with MATLAB and especially the people who are, are very new. By the way, I, I, you see here, I'm going what's a bounce to slow. It will pick up the, the, the speed. The difference level in the students when you have 150 students is out of this world. I've got some of you guys that have just, for some reason, got into MATLAB when you were in eighth grade and just da da da. And some of you have either not seen it or saw it in one of your engineering fundamental classes and didn't get it and just scared to death of it. I, my beginning comments are geared towards those that have kind of never seen it. So you, you, you experts right now, bear with me. We will get to some new stuff. But I don't want to start off day two and just blow everybody away is what I don't want to do. That's just psychologically so bad. But let's see what this thing does. Okay, see, it made the matrix one, two, three, four, five. Now, um, the colon notation. The matrix is the basic structure. Oh, well, let me try one more thing, is just to let you know here, B, B, because people put in matrices so often, MATLAB will get let you get by without the commas. That's a little bit dangerous if, you, if stuff gets strung together, but it'll let you do it in a similar one, space, two, space, three, space, four, four space, or spaces, four and five. And let's run that one. And you see, so, so it'll let you get by with the lazy way without the commas, commas that most people use. Be careful though, if you, if you if the spaces get run together like this, you're trying to put in one, two, three, four, five, or like this, you know, you're trying to put in one, two, three, four, five. And you say, well, there it is, one, two, three, four, five. You can say you told me I can do it without the com uh, without the uh, commas. You see, B is now that because it's all strung together. That's a that's students will do that throughout the semester, right, Jason? They'll they'll have a variable, you know, a, a symbolic variable a times b, and they'll string them together, a b, and a b is very different than a times b. A b is its new new thing. That's the kind of thing here. So be careful of this. And I think most people will do it the second way. Run it. Let's run it again. And make sure. However, because matrices are so fundamental to MATLAB and so important. MATLAB has a slew of matrix tools, matrix builders, matrix manipulators, matrix, anything you've heard about matrices that's useful or commonly used in the scientific world. I, I haven't used them all. There's all sorts of this and that and the other thing I haven't used. But my guess would be if there's something scientifically important about matrix, then MATLAB supports it with a tool or the file. Okay, including your basic matrix builders. Did I put colon notation on there? Yeah. One, one, the one of which, and one of, the, one of the more important ones, I think, is the colon notation. A matrix C equals one colon five. This means, the colon means one through five. So let's, let's, I say the words, but let's try it. You see now C is one, two, three, four, five. Note that you can also do that as one if, if you want that. So what this does with the colon is it defaults the increment to a one. If you want the increment to be different than one, you put that in, I think it's in the middle. I should know. So let's say you want to go by halves to five. 
So, so that, this, this would be like you put the increment in the middle. If you don't say what the increment is, it defaults to a, to a one. Answer five. Oh, I didn't put, I didn't put, oh, I messed that one up. See, this was, this worked, but that, see that little error I made there? I didn't put a colon, I put a semicolon. Let's do this. See, it does like that. However, let's put a half in here. Now, this reads, I'm going from one to five by increments of half. So what am I expecting now? One, one and a half, et cetera, like that. So there you go, one, one and a half, et cetera. So you see the colon notation, if you, if you could only go up by integers, it would still be useful, but not near as useful, but because it allow you to go in any increments that you like, it becomes very powerful. So the colon notation is used consistently through Matlab. There's tons of other things, by the way. <clears throat> Become immediately familiar with that thing though. Matrix and matrix builders. Um, Lin space. Another, another builder, a matrix builder, the Lin space is used, at least the way I use it mainly, is for plotting. If I want to make an X, I want to make a bunch of X, um, X variables, I want to apply Y versus X, and I want to make a bunch of X's, I'll make the Lin space command um, X. Notice here as we go along too, uh, see our workspace getting filled up. If you, if you wonder, gee, what did I have in for X? And, what da da da? There it is. If you get a lot of variables, we fill up. It's nice to have that at your at your fingertips to to see what to see what. Gee, what was B? I can't remember. There you go. see it. There. <clears throat> anyway, Lin space. Lin space. It's that's the name of the command, and it has to be surrounded by parentheses. Lin space of an arguments. Whenever you have a function in MATLAB. You have to surround its arguments by a parentheses. So let's say you want to go from one to 10, one to 10, and you want to make, uh, if we do 10 of them, they'll be weird numbers, won't they? If we do 11 of them. So the syntax here, again, you, you, you want to go to doc, you want to go to doc lens space to learn more about it. but. This is the basic anatomy of the Lin space. I'm going from the number, the first number to the second. I'm going one to 10, and I'm gonna take 11 evenly distributed points. That should give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, if I did things right. And at this point, let us semicolon these things out. That is, they're still there, but let's don't, let's don't keep looking at them. Let's just look at the new thing, okay? And, and I'm doing this because, you know, I don't want a separate file for each of these things, I guess. So I've got a lot of stuff in Intro to MATLAB. So as I go along, I don't want to keep looking at the junk I just did. I want to look at the new thing. So I'll make heavy use of the semicolon. Another thing you could do is just comment all these lines out. But I'll do it this way. Anyway, so we should be getting just this, this now. And look what it did. I went from 1 to 10, 1, 10, 11 of them. And you know, one to 10 and ones is 11 numbers, not 10. Notice if I'd done 10 numbers, I'd get, uh, what the hell happened there? Hmm. One to 10, 10 numbers. Oh, I was wrong, wasn't I? Anyway, one to 10, 10 numbers. Oh, you know what I was thinking was, often you're going zero to 10, and then you get the weird numbers, the 1.1. But anyway, you see the syntax. The start point, the end point, and how many things in between. For plotting, oh, by the way, you can, uh, the down arrows, you can learn to manipulate it, and, and the good old copy and paste, of course, as you know, control C, control V works perfectly here. But um, if you do not put a number of points, let's see what happens. You know, we might anticipate it gets an error because it needs an argument, or it might default to something. Uh-huh. One to 10. And notice it formed 100 numbers. 
So evidently, if you don't say how many, it, it automatically puts 100. And I think the reason for that is it's often used for plotting. And a typical plot needs enough dots to be, to, to not look jerky. Doesn't, you don't want a plot to look like five points by straight lines. You want it to look nice and, nice and continuous. And so a classical engineering plot, a default number is 100. 100 points will typically produce you a nice uh, smooth plot. And so I think that's why it defaults to 100. It's obviously programmed by the guys at MathWorks. Um, you can go, you know, if you have a function that varies, has a lot of variation and you need more detail, you can ask for a thousand, I don't know if I want to bother. There's a thousand points in between and I want to get rid of those, but I don't want to do that. But let's go back to this. So how's it going? Am I, am I going too fast here? Maybe is Jason, are they, are they any, any comments about fast or slow? I, I suspect some of the people are going like it's a little too slow, but that's all right. We'll, we'll get there. Okay, good, good. Because the last, the, you know, psychologically, if nothing else, the last thing I want to do is to walk in this class a second day and absolutely blow you away by all this stuff, you know, I hate it when people do that to me. Okay. Um, you got also log space, um, things like that. Um, so more about, you know, this one, where is this? This one, these are like, ve um, a vector is a special matrix, a, a one by five matrix or say a five by one. So a better title for this one would have been to generate vectors because a one dimensional line of numbers is usually called a vector. It's a special case of a matrix. Let's change its name there because the next thing I want to do is to generate a matrix. That is, uh, you know, an N by N matrix. One way to do it, of course, is to just type the numbers in. All right. And let's say you have, you know, one, two, three. Now, the way to get to a new, that's a row, that's one row. The way to get to a new row is to put the semicolon. And then, and I guess you don't need it, you don't need a break there, but four, five. Now, now, if you do four, five, that's 45. You want four, five, six, or something like that. Okay, let us comment these things out now because we don't want to keep looking at the old so we want we, we want to keep it there to study and to know but we don't want to keep looking at that same hundred numbers every damn time so hopefully we'll just look at the new numbers now notice every time i run this it comes upon the command clc every time i run it which means it clears all this workspace it doesn't clear the variables the variables i mean it clears the um, command window i said the wrong thing it clears the command window for all this stuff but notice the workspace is not cleared. The command clear will clear the workspace for you. But, and that's why it's getting a nice, it, it, basically by putting this and running it everything like that, it runs, the first thing it runs upon is that one. So it gets a nice clean command window for us to look at. Anyway, run. Notice the vector, notice the matrix by putting a semicolon, that means now a new row. I would prefer, to write it like, you know, sometimes you have big matrices and they're all strung together with, you know, you know, whatever. Big old matrices and they're all strung together, seven, eight, nine, duh, 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 and they get long and drawn out and run. I prefer to write it like this. I prefer to go to a new line, go to a new line, so that I can see, this way, I visually see the first row, then semicolon, no, no, then I look at the second row. Why? Because I can see it better. And why? Because has anybody out there, all you 150, 112 people online, has anyone ever made a typographical error? Okay, I'm the only one, good. God bless you all. But you're, you're writing a code, you're trying to get these entries in there, and when they're all strung together, it's, it's correct, I mean, it's, <laughs> But especially when they're real long, they're all strung together. They're hard, just hard to debug. And you could have a little typo in there. 
And it's just much easier to see the thing written in this form. It's more aesthetic to the eyes, plus more important, I had, a, you know, my code's not working right, right? Because I accidentally put a, hit an extra seven in there, 77. It's easier for me to find my error when I do it this way than when they're all strung together. That's, you know, that's sort of a style thing. That's like suggesting, you know, what, what kind of shirt you should wear for the day, I suppose. But I think it's really useful, you know. Um, I, I think it's more than just, you know, suggesting you know what clothes you buy at the store um let me just go to one more thing here before we have to give up today unfortunately i hate to have to leave this class it's fun now that you've formed matrices referencing reference referencing individual entries okay matrix a now we know eight we know matrix a we know what it is it's this it's array it's a three by three array what if you wanted to find the second row first column and what is the second row first column here's row two first column it's a four right the second the second row first column is a four the way you do that is A, second row, first column. And if, unless I did something, oops, no, I wanted to do it up here, sorry. I could do it down there also, but I guess, because it's in the workspace. So, But I want to do it up in my little uh, practice thing here. I want to do A, two, one. And, and uh, you know, as long as I understand what I'm doing here, it's a mistake. I'm anticipating that that should be the second row first column. I, I think that should be a four if I did this right. And there it comes up, the answer is a four. Okay. So there's how you address a single entry. If you want to address a bunch of entries, you can use your good old uh, colon notation. Let's say you want to address entries, um, uh, Let's say you want to get just the last two rows. Let's say you want the last two rows, the first column. You could do two, three. That means two, two, two to three, and say the second column. Now, before you press return on this, what do you anticipate that should be? If that's rows two and three and column two, I, would, I think it's the five and the eight, right? And it should be a column vector of a five and an eight. There it is, you see. Maybe you could call these, you know, if you want to call them something, y equals, y1 equals this one. It's usually best to call them, call them something for use down the line. But there you go. So you see how I figured out that that, and you should be very familiar with these. How do I get an element out of a matrix? How do I get more than one by the use, you know, da da da? And so you see, I was able to rows two and three, comment, there's the five and eight. Notice the structure. It's a <clears throat> two by one, not a one by two. It's a, uh, what do you call it? a column? It, that became a column thing. How do I pick out, I'll do one more thing. How do I pick out just the third row? Say just the third row. A, of something okay the third row that's three but i want all the elements now what you can do here i believe you could put one through three but i think if you just put the colon i think it's like wild card that's that says row three everybody i think let's see that works there there you go row three everybody that's the seven eight and the nine okay so these things Obviously, this isn't the laws of physics, but for you to get good at MATLAB, you have to know matrices. You have to be very comfortable with theoretically what matrices are and multiplying them. And you need to really be comfortable with generating them. 
getting elements, doing stuff. With, there's a bunch more stuff to do with matrices as we go down the line. This matrices stuff is really key to understanding and to getting MATLAB to work. Without it, you just MATLAB's going to be just a horror. With it, it's kind of fun. Look, see, like we picked out the row, we picked out the column, and for especially you guys that like programming, I mean, it's, you know, you know, this isn't the laws of physics, but it's kind of fun to mess with it and be able to do all these things. So I think many of the students really end up liking MATLAB if they take it slow and piece by piece. And anyway, um, next time I'm going to continue this file, you know, uh, in Monday's class, okay? Um, Jason's going to say something about MATLAB greater on Monday, correct? And then it's kind of like today, uh, hopefully about 10 minutes or, so, or whatever he needs about MATLAB greater. And then I will continue with this file. So save this file and we'll pick it up because I want, obviously I've got quite a bit more to tell you about this. And then you have a semester worth and a lifetime of practice with this thing. Okay, I'll end right here and uh, a little over, I guess. And I'll stay on the line for a little bit longer if anybody has any questions or wants to say hello or whatever, you know.